Hey guys, David Small here with Team Small Robots coming at you with an event report for the Angry Vehicle Competition 2022 in Longmount, Colorado. For this event, I brought my one pound compressed air flipper, the Highlander, my three pound CO2 flipper, Kelpie, and my 12 pound drum spinner, Son of Cram. So Son of Cram has its first fight against Fast Track, which is a beater bar built by my friend Jeff Waters, creator of Jackpot. He lands a nice shot on me right off the bat, but the shot I give back sends him bouncing on his blade out of the arena, and with that, the match is over and Son of Cram wins by KO. This fight was a little too short for my liking, especially since it wasn't my intention to send him out of the arena, it just kinda happened, so I'm hoping we get a chance to fight in the future. Switching over to Kelpie, its first fight was against a drum spinner named Calculon. I start off the match by charging at him. I position the scoop underneath him, hit the button, and nothing happened. I tried again, I hit the button, and nothing happened. Uh, so something was wrong with my flipper, and I was pretty much just a wedge bot at this point. On the plus side, it seemed my opponent was also having weapon troubles with his drum, but thanks to my better drivetrain and overall wedginess, I was able to push him around the arena, until eventually Calculon tapped out and Kelpie won. Now it was time to take the robot back to the pits and figure out why the flipper wasn't working. But first I had to take Highlander up for its first fight of the day. It was against a vertical spinner named Fission, but unfortunately with this fight and a few other fights I didn't get anyone to record it, and the event also wasn't live streamed so I wasn't able to grab any footage from anywhere, so apologies for that. So going off memory here, I recall that he had a lot of gyro going on, so I was able to drive around and get flips wherever possible while avoiding his weapon. He might have landed a hit here and there, but nothing that was critical. Though one of the hits he gave me caused my fill valve to pop out and it was kind of flopping around the side of the robot, so I had to make sure that side of the robot never faced him. But at the end of the fight, he did manage to hit it and it snapped the whole valve off, which made all the air in my air tanks uh, drain out. So I was out of flips at that point, but there was only a few seconds left in the match, so it didn't really matter too much. If memory serves, the fight went the distance, and Highlander won by judge's decision. So after the fight, I was given this cool little memento from Fission's driver. I guess some point during the match I must have hit him up in the air, and then he landed on his upright, which caused his own weapon to hit one of the ears on the upright. So that's a cool little trinket that I'll add to my trophy shelf. And with that, all of my robots have won their first fight, so the tournament's going very well so far. Son of Cram was up again, this time against a wedge bot named Grand. Grand was built by Ted and Pete from Team Cosmos. It's tanky and has a ton of drive power and magnets, making it very pushy. It's even able to push robots 20 times its own weight, like Copperhead here. So I really had no idea how this fight was going to go. Unfortunately though, this is one of the fights that I don't have any footage of, which is a shame because it was a real slugfest. Grand was driven very well, and I pretty much had to fight the wedge head on every single time I tried to make an engagement. But I did get a handful of hits on the back and sides every once in a while. There was a lot of big hits that would send mostly me flying around because of all the magnetic downforce Grand had. Eventually though, I started to see a bunch of these T-nuts flying across the arena. At first I thought they were mine, but this version of Son of Cram only has two of them, and there was way more than that scattered across the arena. These ended up being the nuts that held on Grand's wedge. Then with every big hit I landed, a couple more of these nuts would fall off. Then, right at the last second, I landed one more massive hit that ripped off the entire wedge. This would have been an awesome moment to rewatch, but unfortunately I didn't get any footage of it, and as far as I know, no one else did either. If you happen to be recording the fight or you know someone else who did, feel free to message me on Facebook or leave a comment below, because I'd really love to see it again. Also, I wasn't entirely sure if the hit I got at the end of the fight was late or not, so that's another reason I'd like to rewatch it. But anyway, after that, the fight went to the judges, and Son of Cram won. Since I was still trying to figure things out with Kelpie, I had that fight postponed, and we move on to Highlander, who is now fighting Dizzy, another vert. I had a hard time trying to outmaneuver him. Highlander also felt kind of sluggish driving it around. It didn't seem to have the zip that it had originally. I wonder if uh, the battery's starting to go bad. But anyway, I tried to line up my scoop and get up flips where I could, but I just wasn't able to get around his weapon. I'd try to go directly head to head, but he'd win that engagement and pop me up into the air. I'm able to self right of course, but on one of these occasions while I was upside down, he got through my impenetrable duct tape top armor and ended up slicing my power wire which made me stop completely, so I tapped, and the win goes to Dizzy, which means Highlander is now in the loser's bracket. 
So now let's go back to Kelpie. The original issue it was having was that the flipper wasn't firing. After messing around with some of the components and checking all the connections, it turned out that this three-way connection had one loose wire, and that's what the problem was. So after resoldering that, it was good to go. Then I also noticed that one of my drive motors was loose, so that meant I had to take apart the entire drive side, separate the motor from the gearbox, and then reattach it properly. Then on top of all that, I started having receiver issues. I used one of these mini D8 FR Sky receivers, and it was doing all sorts of wacky things. Signals were getting mixed together, they were getting turned on and off, channels were switching. It was not a good time. Um, I don't really like this receiver anyway, because once you solder onto those pads, the pads just snap off and it becomes impossible to use again. So I swapped it out for one of my tried and true Fly Sky four channel receivers, and it was good to go. So now Kelpie was ready to go against a horizontal spinner named Wicked Twister. If you noticed in the previous images, I have some new TPU wedges that I'm trying out here. I start the match off with a quick box rush to make sure he can't get up to speed, but he is able to anyway. Kelpie does a decent job of shrugging off some of the blows. The sparks fly because it hits my scoop instead of the TPU wedges as intended. He lands another big shot on me, then I'm able to push him over into the corner and get a big flip, sending him about a foot and a half, maybe two feet up in the air. I fire the arm to do a cool backflip, self-right, and then the fight continues. Then he lands a big hit on me that dislodges my wedge and rips the TPU out from the screws. This is where things really started to go downhill. I get my scoop underneath him, but his blade hits me at the last second and my arm misses entirely. While I'm upside down, he lands a whole bunch of hits in a row on me. Then I waste a ton of gas self-riding. I get one or two more little weak flips, but it doesn't really do much. He continues to wail on me and I take blow after blow until one of my drive sides stops working. He lands another big hit and one of my wheels gets ripped out. At this point, I'm just hoping for a miracle. I'm stuck on top of him and fire the arm to get off, but that ends up just flipping me over and then I don't have enough gas to self right So I tap out and the wind goes to Wicked Twister. This match was absolutely brutal and this image really shows that. I took a ton of damage to almost every part of the robot. The carbon fiber base plate was shattered, the UHMW armor was broken and bent in multiple places. The TPU wedges really didn't work at all and I lost both of my front wheels. Because there was so much work that needed to be done on this robot, only for it to probably just get thrashed again, that and I also have two other robots to focus on, I decided to just drop it even though I was still in the loser's bracket. And I'm not gonna lie, this is kind of how all of Kelpie's fights have been going recently at the last few events. It's such a fragile and complicated robot that it ends up being more work than it's worth. I've been tempted just to scrap the entire idea entirely, but... As usual, the gear started to turn just a few hours after the event, and I have some ideas for a redesign. But up next, Highlander is ready for its next fight against Sovietski, a vertical spinner. Flippers are dumb. So yeah, he ruptured one of the tanks, which was actually pretty cool. It made a nice loud boom noise as it exploded. Um, I guess, you know, it's my fault because I don't have any top armor, which is my fault because I don't have any weight for it which is my fault because I decided to make an ant weight pneumatic flipper. Since it blew up in such a cool way, I was sure to sign it and then give it to the driver, Alec, of uh, Sovietski. He did an event report on AVC also, so be sure to check the link I have in the description to check his video out. And with that, Highlander is now out of the tournament for good. It seems that it'll need a total redesign as well. Meanwhile, Son of Cram is now ready for its next fight against Kitten Mittens. Now if you watched my previous event report, you know that I fought Kitten Mittens in the past, and during that fight I was able to sneak around, bust open his side hatch, and expose all of his electronics, but my follow-up shot caused us to go weapon to weapon, which KO'd my robot. It turned out that the receiver blew up from poor shock mounting. So instead of being hot glued to the weapon motor, it now has these chunks of foam glued to it, and it sits right here in the middle between these two drive motors. I still wanted to avoid going weapon to weapon though. I did kind of end up failing this task in the first three seconds, but my robot was still moving, so that was a good side. Then I went around the back and hit him some more. I continued my plan of driving around him and only hitting the sides and back, being as cautious as possible. There were lots of fun hits with kitten mittens flying across the arena and bouncing all over the floor. Then it happened again. I landed a big hit on the side that opened up one of his access hatches. His electronics were now exposed. We once again do our little dance where I try to drive around to the back side of him and he turns around. I'm able to get a little baby hit that causes him to start bouncing around and he lands upside down. 
but while he's upside down, I'm finally able to get my kill shot, and a battery goes flying across the arena as it shoots out of kitten mittens. At this point, I thought I won, but he kept moving, so I guess I only got the decoy battery? He told me later that he runs two batteries in parallel, so he doesn't need both. But he is running at only half capacity at this point. Then we landed a massive weapon-to-weapon -weapon blow that sent both of us flying backwards. Again, I thought I won because Kitten Mittens fell out of the box, but he managed to crawl back in, so back to work I go. So now, in addition to trying to avoid Kitten Mittens' weapon, I'm also trying to avoid the battery in the middle of the arena. We don't want the event staff to have to deal with lipo fires, so both of us were kind of doing the best we could to carefully tiptoe around the battery and not make it blow up. So after sharing one more massive hit and flying across the arena, this foam wheel ejected itself from my robot. It's just something I use for packing to keep the battery safe inside the chassis. It used to be one of Highlander's wheels, that's why it has those hot glue splotches on it, but foam is foam, so I decided to use it anyway. There's nothing but friction holding it in place, which is dumb because friction kind of stops being real when big hits happen in fighting robots. So I guess it wiggled loose and started inching its way towards the weapon belt. Then once the belt grabbed it, it turned into one of those ball throwing machines that uses the spinning wheels. And then it flew out of this tiny gap in between the chassis and the belt. I'm extremely lucky that the entire weapon system didn't get clogged up because of this. I'd also like to mention that I added a reverse switch, so when I get flipped over like this, Flipping the switch reverses the drive so like I'm driving normal, and it helped a ton with my inverted driving. Then we share a few more hits, Kitten Mitten starts bouncing all over the arena, eventually bouncing on his own battery, sending it flying across the arena. It unfortunately didn't explode, but I guess that's good for the EOs. Then the match was over, it went to a judge's decision where Son of Cram was declared the victor. Which now means Son of Cram is in the finals. But first it was time to take the robot back to the pits and take a look at the damage. You can see that there's some very large chunks missing from the TPU and the HDPE on the chassis of the robot. Then the pulley started to separate itself from the drum a little bit. But the biggest piece of damage was this self-carved circle into the HDPE plastic. Although it looks like it's supposed to be there, it's not. What ended up happening was one of the nuts on my drum started to come loose, and as it became unthreaded, it started to carve this big circle into the plastic. And as it unscrewed some more, it made the hole deeper. And luckily, the match ended before it could really start tearing my chassis apart. So with that, all I had to do was take the drum off, tighten down all the nuts, make sure they're on there extra tight. I also decided to replace the pulley I had on there since it's been on there since Norwalk and all of Moto. Then I put it all back together and it was good to go for the finals. Son of Cram's last opponent of the day will be against Nightcrawler, built by my friend Pete Covert. It is a beater bar inspired by Copperhead, which is kind of funny because Son of Cram is inspired by Poison Arrow. So it's like a mini Caustic Creations battle at the event that Caustic Creations is hosting, so that's pretty great. As the match starts off, we both go charging towards each other. I try to outmaneuver him but make a mistake and he ends up catching me on the side. But these TPU side panels are fantastic for absorbing all kinds of hits. I knock him up on his head, which causes him to go flying backwards on his own beater bar. He lands one big shot on me that sends me flying across the arena. But I retaliate with a nice big hit of my own. It's a pretty close back and forth. We pretty much just took turns tossing each other around the arena, big hit after big hit. Here my drum suddenly stopped working, and I thought maybe I broke a belt or something came disconnected, but I think the motor just needed a chance to catch up and respin, because after I turned the throttle down and back up again, it was good to go. While the weapon was down, I was really able to play around with the phenomenal pushing power this robot has. I have the front two wheels made out of gum rubber instead of light flights now, and it pushes so much better. I love the drive on this thing now. Then I land a nice big hit that rips off one of his front prong things, and then sends him flying into the Lexan where I was standing. Then his weapon bounces him off the floor, and he bounces into the wall again. A little terrifying in person, but it was awesome. We go weapon to weapon with a nice pretty explosion of sparks, and I line up one more big hit that rips off another piece of metal and sends him flying out of the arena. And with that, Son of Cram is the ABC Hobbyweight Champion. Or should I say Top Banana, as I'm now the proud owner of what might be the greatest trophy of all time. This event was also a cool moment because Ted and Pete from Team Cosmos actually fought the original cram that my dad made all the way back in 2002 with their robots IO and Alpha Pujo. Here's IO throwing cram into the pit. It's okay dad, after 20 years you're finally avenged. And thanks Pete for this awesome little memento. So after a quick moment of celebration it was time to take Son of Cram back to the pits and inspect the damage that Nightcrawler inflicted. 
as you'll notice here, a lot of the screws were starting to back their way out. So luckily the fight ended early because who knows, I might have had the entire chassis fall apart on me. I must not have remembered to Loctite everything before the fight. There was also some damage to the TPU side panels, or the pickles as my friends and I have been calling them but I'm really impressed with how well they've been holding up. These are massive hits taken directly from a hobby weight beater bar. Then taking the top panel off reveals another piece of damage. He must have landed on top of me with his weapon at some point in the fight. You can see that the top panel itself is cracked in the titanium as well as dented a little bit. And then the green motor guard is also completely shattered. Those are just made out of ABS though, so it's not surprising that they broke. The motor is still working though, so they did their job of protecting it at least. And with that, AVC 2022 is a wrap. I had an awesome time, and I'm thrilled that one of my favorite events is back. I hope it's here to stay. A huge shout out to Zach, Casey, and the rest of the event staff for putting on such an awesome event. If you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to subscribe to my channel and my Facebook page, both at Team Small Robots. Also, if you think Son of Cram's cool, I'm probably going to make a teardown video in the future. It'll go over every part I use, as well as describe how it's made, and go over all the other details of the robot. So if that sounds like something that interests you, be sure to subscribe for that as well. And with that, I'll see you all next time. Later.